Hi everyone and welcome along. Today we're going to paint a lovely boat on the water and once again I'm going to be showcasing these new brushes that we now have uh, on the website available. They're fantastic larger form brushes that are a great supporting act for the regular Pro Art series I use. So grab your paints and let's get started. Right, so we're going to be incorporating my old faithfuls with my extra brushes today. Um, but first we're going to do a little bit of drawing. So I've got my pencil, I've got uh, a, a straight edge, could be a set square, could be whatever you like. And I'm gonna put two boats in the water here. So the first thing I like to do is to create the sort of the flat line where the boat hits the water. And from that, we can have the boat rising up out of the water. I always start with the bow, that line just curving up out of the water, which then allows me to create the sweeping side of the boat. And sometimes then we might see a little bit of the other side. So you've got that straight line, not straight line, sort of main line there. And you might see a little bit of the back curling up but what I really want to look at today is the masts so we'll just have a little line there and the one coming up there so the the sail is all uh, rolled up but we've still got our mast coming up there and then we'll have one just a bit bigger down in the foreground so it'll just be sort of coming from the side. Curving around. Just see a little bit in there. And we'll pop a mast in as well. That one coming off from the side. And we could have a little boy just in the water there and that's also going to have a sort of flat line. Now um, what I want to do is to use both my Pro Art brushes and my larger brushes and just sort of showcase what we can do with them and, and which brushes are best for what. So we're going to start with a, a wash over the whole piece. Now you'll notice that I've only put um, masking tape in the corners and that's just to keep the paper down because what I want to show you is how you can still get a, quite a nice crisp neat edge on the side of the paper using the flathead one wash brush because it's got this amazing uh, flat sharp sort of corner as well which just allows you to be really precise so I'm going to mix up some color and then we'll get started to begin I'm going to take my mop brush and I'm going to do a wash over the whole piece just with water clean water and then down this side I've got a mix here of uh, Payne's Grey, French Ultramarine Blue and a bit of Cobalt Blue Deep and what I am going to do is I am going to paint a lovely flat line and now I can sort of use it to sweep into the wash because of course the mop brush placed water onto the page but I started the straight line on a bit that the mop hadn't reached so it creates a lovely sort of flat crisp edge. Now I can get a bit more colour on here and I can now use the sort of the narrower edge of this uh, flathead brush or I can use the broader edge but essentially it does allow us actually a little bit of interest so what I want to do is I want to get a sense that there's a lot of colour coming from this side 
So I'm just playing around with my, my blues. I'm not worrying too much about the sort of fairly sort of blocky finishes because in the, the wash, these will pan out nicely. What I'm being very careful to do is not overwork the page. I want to make sure if I start sort of poking about with it and everything, it will not thank me for it because it, I'll start to sort of pick paint up off the page. Okay, so I'm going to leave that to dry. So that was all done with these two brushes and I can put those to one side and get in there with a bit more detail next. So that has dried beautifully, really nice and dry and um, I just love how you get this crisp line and then it fades off to nothing. I mean, it's really nice, it's very satisfying when you pull off the masking tape and you get these amazing crisp lines, but there's also something really beautiful about allowing uh, just the brush to do it for you. Okay, so now I've got a few of my Pro Art Masterstroke brushes and we're gonna start painting in the body of the boats. So this is quite a stylized piece, so I'm painting it in Payne's Gray and then a bit of Alizar and Crimson as well. So I've got my size zero and what I'm gonna do is I am going to start from the sort of back and also from the sort of the bottom up and I'm going to just capture the sort of the bottom stripe if you will of this boat and then just cleaning off my brush and I'm just going to Clean that and just bring it down a little bit into there. Now I'm going to now just drag the colour up a little. So I'm just using it sort of as both a painted sort of boat, but also the shadow, the highlight and low light. Oh, there we go, paint's grey, one colour. Okay, now I'm going to. Get a stripe going along there. I just don't want it to be too heavily, heavily painted on. But of course we just want things to be able to show up over the wash, but it, it is able to show up really quite easily without being too heavy because this was all done nice and translucent. And then now I've got my Alizar in crimson and I'm going to paint in one more panel along the boat. So that's all done with the size zero brush. And the size zero is a wonderful brush. For the slightly larger brush, um, you could still do it in the size zero, for, especially for the, uh, the more detailed bits. But size two can also come into play for covering the larger areas. So I'm just going in exactly the same method, starting with the base and then just cleaning off my brush and just sweeping that along just to get the beginnings of a reflective ripple. And I'm just going to uh, do the same technique as that and then we'll get on with the next bit. And now we're going to move down a brush or two 
I've got my two tenths here and we're going to start putting in things like the mast. So this is the type of thing that if you wanted, this could be done with the rigger. But what I quite like is it's still a, a kind of structured thing, the mast, and I quite like that wobble that you get of a sort of pressing down the brush and getting a, a slight thin to thick going on, even with that thinner, further away boat. So the two tenths for me is my preference, but you see I'm sort of running out of brush at various points and with a rigger that wouldn't happen but I've got I've got plans for the rigger instead doing two little parallel lines at places allows for the appearance of light springing up and then I'm going to get just a little bit of a more concentrated colour and um, just darken in the boat there. Okay, and the Alizar and Crimson is going to come into play again. We'll create the, the boy here. So nice and dark on on one side, clean off the brush, clean it right off, then draw that colour over. And just let that let that settle in too. Okay, so I want to get one of my new brushes in here now. This is the Rigger, and it's this long slender bristle. And we're going to use it to create rigging on the mast. So I'm going to just begin by at the back here. See, look at that amazing thin line. Um, now I'm no sailor. So I don't really know sort of where my rigging should be going, but just look at how beautiful those thin lines are. And I just don't think you'd get anything as good with any other brush. And you can see I've also just been, been using this for quite a few lines now and I'm still going strong. I think you just have to go for it with, um, with these lines. Try not to sort of overthink. Okay, I think, uh, like I said, not a particularly nautical person, so I am slightly making it up now. But that is just the, the beauty of this long slender brush. I'm selling a size zero because that's the size that I think it's just so useful because it's actually still quite uh, a lot of bristles in the brush there. Now I'm going to go down to my four tenths and just drop in a few extra little details. And then there's one last thing that's very, very important that we haven't done. And that is the reflection in the water. And I think 
a size 2 brush will be brilliant for this one here. So what I'm going to do is get some fairly, uh, fairly strong concentrated uh, Payne's Grey and I'm going to begin right up by the boat and just paint in these brush strokes that sort of little tapered lines that go from thin to thick to thin and essentially I want I want them to sort of bleed together but gradually as I get further down I'm going to allow for more unpainted space amongst them. In the past I've done um, slightly more precise reflections where we've got a bit of the colour in and I will drop a little bit of that colour in but this is quite a sort of monotone piece the most important thing is to really get that darkness right up where the boat does hit the water and then also with our with our boy like a hint of And then further up we can still use the size 2 brush because it's still got wonderful control. things to think about are just keeping it nice and dark towards the top and then allowing for just a few more gaps of unpainted space but keeping them all still sort of quite close together as a sort of little family of, of ripples and actually this one almost join up you could have one or two ripples just sort of a little bit higher. And there we go. A really nice, very simple two boats in the water using our old friends, the pointed round Pro Art Masterstroke brushes, and then some of our brand new brushes that are on sale in my website, either as a set or individually. Thanks so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed that one and I hope you enjoyed seeing how these brushes work. If you want to get yourself either the set or individual brushes, then you can find those on my website. Details in the episode notes below. Thank you so much for watching and I want to say a huge thank you to my patrons for their support because that support enables us to keep creating videos like these that everyone can enjoy. And if you enjoyed it then hit the like button, comment below to let me know how you got on with that one and of course if you never want to miss another video just hit the subscribe button and that little notification bell. And we'll see you again next time. Bye!